I'll be there for you. Cassian said I had to. Whoa! Did you hear that? K2SO didn't want to do something right, but he totally had to because Cassian told him to. Oh, man. I gotta get me one of those Imperial droids. Because you don't do anything, I ask. Jeez. No! Oh, hello, my name is, uh, Fu Manchu! Seriously, get to work on getting us one of those droids. Yes, you can use a time machine. Just, just go. Hey, hey, close the door before you leave. Oh, he actually did it. I guess I didn't need one of those droids after all. But yeah, guess what? As soon as he gets back up, what? Geez, that was fast. Man, that time machine is really good. Okay, today's review will be on the following. Today's review will be on the hot toys for cool boys. Iron Maiden China. Us, I don't know, 90210. Mmms, 406. Mmms, 406. You know, those are really good. One six-figure swirl K2SO or K2SO. Ketuso. Oh, that's a neat name. Anyways, let's open up the shipper box, shall we? Freshly removed from the shipper and still looking like it walked out of Dexter's Kill Room because it's wrapped in plastic and man, oh man, this is awesome. So let's remove this plastic and get a better look at it, shall we? So, here's the box with the plastic removed and check out that picture of K2SO. Now, you'd think that was the actual prop from the movie, but... He was just computer animated, man. This is the toy, and it looks amazing. I mean, that is really, really cool indeed. Down here, we've got the Star Wars logo, and a little, like, I don't know, like, thing that's wrapped around the box that has, like, a silver K2SO drawing or whatever on it, and his name, and that is pretty cool indeed. Now, this figure is one that I've wanted for quite some time. I, I like Rogue One. I don't think it's the greatest movie ever, but I do like things about it. Uh, there are things I don't like about it, but honestly, I really do like this robot design, even though I think they should have went with the, uh, Death Star droid for this character. I mean, they, they created a whole new robot for this movie, and that's cool and all, but if you want to fit into the Star Wars universe, you should use, you know, the bots that were actually in the first Star Wars movie. And they had Death Star droids, and they could have made this a reprogrammed Death Star droid, but nope, they had to go with this spindly-legged thing. I don't know. He just looks like the kind of droid you could walk up behind him and push him over. But you know what? He's still cool looking, and I like him a lot. Now, everybody loves the fact that Alan Tudyk does his voice, and that's pretty cool, too. But you know what? I just think he's pretty neat indeed. Now, I wanted this figure from day one. I wanted a Jin Erso, uh, but I wasn't able to get her. And this one, I just happened to get by sheer luck, honestly. Uh, my wife found a store nearby that actually sells Hot Toys figures. And I was like, what? And she told me the last time she was there, when she went there to get something, they had a Scarlet Witch. Well, I wanted a Scarlet Witch big time, and she went there to get it, and of course they didn't have it. But when she told me all the figures they did have, she was just naming them off, and she said, they have K2SO, and he's really cheap. And I was like, what? Because I told her, I said, that's one I've been looking for. So, yep, this is kind of an impulse review, because I did not think I'd be getting this figure, and this is very awesome indeed. But enough about the front of the box, let's look at the back of the box. Even though I didn't say anything about the front of the box other than, look at that neat shiny picture. But on the back of the box is kind of plain. You just got all the little gobbledygook, as you can see. And if you look really carefully right here, you can see how that little uh, cardboard insert kind of attaches to the box. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, I thought it went all the way around. But as you can see, it's kind of like a shoebox, and that is cool indeed. Let's flip it back around, shall we? But yeah, this is a figure I didn't think I would be reviewing at all, and honestly, I'm just happy to have this figure. I haven't even looked at him yet, but this box is really heavy. If you told me this figure was die-cast, I'd believe it. I don't think it is, because I've watched reviews on this thing before, and I've never heard anything about it. But man, this is a really heavy, heavy figure, and you'd think with these skinny arms and legs, he wouldn't weigh very much. But yep, it's pretty heavy. But anyways, I say we waste no more time and open up this box. What do you say? So, after lifting off the lid and looking underneath, you'll actually see how that little band is attached to the box. It's actually taped down on the inside. That's kind of weird, but yeah, it's taped on either side with little circular tape things. So that's kind of weird indeed. But with the lid removed, you find this underneath, a really cool picture of K2SO, and that is awesome. Seriously, you could frame that, and people would think it's just a still from the movie. That looks so cool. And look at how his little eyes there are all lit up. Man, oh man, that is cool indeed. But yeah, let's remove this flap and look underneath, shall we? So, when you lift off that flap and look underneath, you will find the figure wrapped in a lot of plastic. You can barely see him. It's all shiny looking. But yeah, he is totally wrapped in plastic. That is wild. But yeah, you can see there, he is really big. Now, I expected 
expected him to be big, but this is really big. He's got some batteries there. He's got some little accessories off to the side. And yeah, he didn't really come with a whole lot. So let's open him up and check him out. What do you say? So, here's the figure tray laying down with the top clear cover removed. And man, he is totally covered in plastic, isn't he? He looks like he's covered in the shroud of K2SO, and they're just waiting for him to wake up on Easter or something, man. But anyways, as you can see, he doesn't come with a whole lot. He's got three batteries right here for his little light-up eyes. He's got a little blaster that Jin gave him that he wanted really badly. You've got the figure itself totally invisible there. I think he's got predator technology or something. Over here you've got, what's that? I don't know, a little bomb. I guess that's the bomb he caught and he threw back at the stormtroopers. And then right here, he's, it's his little back antennas. And I'm so happy to see the way they are put together. I thought that you had to put the little short one and the long one in like a little hole or something. I love that they're attached. I was so afraid that they'd like have, you know, be real fragile and you'd have to like mount them into little holes and stuff. But at least this way, it looks like they're, you know, thicker connected at that little base plate. So that's really cool indeed. Speaking of bases, here's his base here, his little uh, top part. And the base itself is underneath him. You can barely see it underneath his legs there. But man, I can't wait to see him standing up. So let's stand him up. What do you say? So, here's K2SO fresh out of the package, still with the plastic on his head, on his hands, and on his feet. But before we get into the figure, let's talk about the base, because this is the way it comes out of the package. Now, as you can see, it's wrapped in a little bit of plastic, and it's got that little picture of K2SO on top of it. Now, that's actually, I believe, a sticker. It's like a little insert that you can, like, put on top of the base instead of having the normal, like, grading base or whatever it is underneath there. And you can have it personalized for K2SO, and that's pretty cool indeed. Now, I'll probably take this off because I don't know how you would actually stick this down. I'm assuming you could just lay it there and it looks fine like that you know once it goes through the hole or whatever it's fine it'll you know stay on and stuff like that but yeah if this is a sticker and you have to mount it on top of there man that's like straight to the edge there's no way you'd get that on there perfect unless you're like an expert at those things but yeah that's pretty cool indeed now i'll probably take mine off because to uh put the uh the little uh, grabber thing through the hole there, I have a feeling that would dent part of the uh, sticker there. So I'm just going to take that off and just have the, the base the way it's supposed to be. So if you remove that sticker, what you get is a gray base, as you can see, with little panel lines and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool indeed. Now, I left the plastic on top. And I have to say, sliding that uh, sticker thing out from under that plastic is nigh impossible because this is really sticky plastic or whatever. It's stuck down. It's almost like a sticker stuck down. And, yeah, this is really slick as well. Now, if you look carefully there, that is pretty awesome. That rebel or alliance symbol or whatever that is, the resistant, whatever. I think it's rebels. I, I, these new movies are messing me up, man. But, yeah. Yeah, that's like a, it's almost like sandpaper or whatever, and it's very slick, and it's covered in some sort of plastic, I believe. Yeah, if you look at it up close there, you can see little air bubbles and stuff like that. Yeah, that's covered in plastic, so when you take that off, it's even shinier than this is already. And you can already see K2SO, like, reflecting in it right there. That's pretty cool, so that's shiny. Now, looking at the back of it, I don't think this is an actual sticker. If it is, I really can't tell. It may just be like a little, like, thin plastic, you know, overlay for the base itself. So, that's kind of cool. But, yeah, seeing how shiny it is, his big old clodhopper feet would scratch it up, man. I, I would assume if you move it around a lot. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave that off and collect that just as a card and use the base like this and... That'll be cool enough for me. Oh, and by the way, if you look carefully there at his little nameplate, you can see that it's covered in plastic, too, so it's actually probably shinier than that shows right there. But I say we've talked enough about this base. Let's talk about the figure, shall we? So, here's the figure mounted onto the base, and as you can see, he'd be stepping on his own face if I hadn't taken that sticker off. But man, this is awesome, and this base actually snaps in underneath his thighs or whatever perfectly. That is cool. So yeah, I say we remove all this uh, plastic from his feet, his hands, and his head, and get a better look at him. What do you say? And finally, here's K2SO with all the plastic removed, and holy cow, look at his eyes there. I don't even have the batteries in. That's just the light reflecting off the lenses or whatever's inside there. That is so awesome, and it looks just like the movie, man. That is so cool. And, yeah, I was really afraid when I opened this. He had plastic wrapping around his head. He's got two little specky things. See, there's one right there sticking off from his mouth, and I was so afraid they had broken off or anything like that. But, nope, they're still on there, and that makes me happy. But look at those eyes. I don't even think this figure needs batteries, man. That is so cool indeed. Down here, you've got his uh, torso. Now, this figure is very, very heavy. This part of his uh, chest 
is very heavy. If you told me there was metal underneath, underneath that uh, chest plate, because the chest plate itself is made out of plastic, but if you told me there was metal inside there, I'd believe it. Now, as for metal, his lower legs, right down here, underneath his knees, all the way down to his feet, that is metal. I don't think his feet are, but his... Uh, his uh, lower legs are because they're cold to the touch and they are super heavy as well. Now, like I said, this figure has some weight to him. That is cool. And I love the fact that there's actually metal, you know, in there. Because, like I said, this figure is very spindly and he just looks like he would be light. But no, when you hold this figure, he is very, very heavy. And that is awesome indeed. And look at these details. You can see he's got articulation there at the toes. He's got those cool silver things. Now, when I had seen pictures of this figure, I thought those silver things would be like clear plastic. I really did. And seeing that they're like a shiny silver metal looking color, that is cool. I like that a lot better. You can see his hands there are in, are in uh, karate chop mode. Now, I believe those are articulated fingers, but we'll get into that in a second. And then working, up, uh, working our way up here back to his chest, that is cool. You can see there's a little bit of like battle damage and stuff like that, a little scratching and stuff. But we'll talk about that too in a second. But yeah, that head is awesome and I absolutely love it. Now, looking at the figure from the side, you can see those little spiky things coming off of his face. Now, I was so afraid that those would be broken. I love how his neck looks like a skeleton neck. That is pretty cool indeed. Right here, you can see some of the uh, battle damage or the wearing on the Imperial logo there. That is very cool indeed. You can see there's little scratches and dents and stuff. Or not dents so much as just scratches in his metal, and that is pretty cool indeed. I love the shiny silver of the elbows and the knees and the ankles and stuff. That is so cool indeed. Even in the wrist there, as you can see and that is very cool as well. Now, like I said, you can see there that those little fingers are articulated and even his little finger knuckles have the silver and that is cool indeed. So let's see what those hands can do, shall we? Now, each of the digits of the fingers can be moved. Now, I don't think the fingers themselves swivel, but the thumb does. Now, you can fold them up into a fist so that he can hold his gun or that bomb or anything else you want to make him hold and that is pretty cool indeed now his fingers are very you know thin so i'm really scared to move them much more than this but they look awesome and i love the fact that they're articulated but i do have to say that it is very scary to move these fingers at first because they start out very stiff to move at each joint plus they're so thin that you, yeah be very careful when you move them because you don't want to break one off because if you do k2so might give you the finger but anyways, you got the figure right up here looking very awesome indeed. And we still haven't even looked at him from behind, so I say we flip him around and check him out from behind. What do you say? And man, oh man, does he look awesome from behind as well. Check that out. Now, this is the first time I'm even seeing this figure from behind, and he looks cool. As you can see, he's got a little bit of battle damage on the back of his head there. At the top here, you can see that little uh, panel there with the two little holes. That's where his antennas attach, and that's very cool. Can't wait to do that. It looks like he could store videotapes or something in his back or cassette tapes or something. Down here, he's got like a car stereo from an old car. That's pretty cool indeed. And you can see all the gears and stuff of his waist that is awesome indeed. He has, he has a very flat robo butt, but you know, most robots do. And then down here you've got his knees. Like I said, I love that silver. It just looks so cool indeed. And I don't know why. I just thought that would be clear plastic. But yeah, that is so much better. He looks so cool indeed. But I say we waste no more time and attach that little antenna. What do you say? Now, looking at the antenna first, you can see it's got the two little long pegs right there and then the little base. So yeah, there's no confusion on how to attach this. And all you do is Pop it into place like so. The only problem is be sure you're ready when you want to pop it into place. Because I don't think you could get that out again without breaking it off. Because the only way to grip it is by the antennas. And they are very brittle so they could probably snap off. And, you know, maybe you could like slide an X-Acto knife blade or something underneath there. But you're just going to scratch up the plastic and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, Hot Toys was pretty tricky when they did that. Because there's no way you could store them back in the plastic probably without them breaking off. So... Yeah, so before you pop them off, make sure pop them on. Make sure you're ready to leave them on there forever, because there's no getting them off that I know of. Now, all that said, and there still ain't no batteries in his head. Check this out. Oh, that's so cool. But yeah, all that said, I say we waste no more time and look at this figure up close. What do you say? So, here we go with a super duper close up look, and I don't know how easy this is going to be because this figure is pretty big, but as you can see, he's got the little Darth Vader like coin slots on his chest too, and that's pretty cool. He's got a little bit of weathering right there. I love the little silver scratches and stuff. That is awesome. Working our way up to his chest, this right here looks like a snowtrooper's armor or whatever. That's pretty cool, or Dengar's armor. 
Up here, you've got his neck. Now, that neck is really cool. It's like a little ball joint, and that is cool. I should say big ball joint, because it is. You got his skeletal neck right there, and then right here, you have his face with those two little, like, pointy things that stick out. Now, I was really afraid they would break off, so be very careful with those. I don't know if they're metal or not. I haven't, you know, tested it, but yeah, that's pretty cool indeed. Just be very careful of them. Right here, you got his mouth-looking thing. You got all the little design work there around his jaw. That is very cool. It looks like a robot skull. Up here at his eyes, you can see he's got the little, like, C-3PO eyes, the vents or whatever, and they are super reflective, as you can see, and that is awesome. Underneath there, if you look carefully, you can see his eyeballs, just like in the movie, and that's what the lights light up, and that is so cool indeed, man. They did a great job on these eyes, because they're tiny. But, yeah, I mean, this is a big figure and all, but he's got little bitty eyes. That is cool. You can see his, uh, he's got some speckling there, uh, like metal flake, uh, gray or whatever color he is, black or gray or whatever, charcoal. And that is cool indeed. Let's turn him to the side. Now, looking at the figure from the side, you can see the little speckling of the scratching and stuff like that. That is very cool indeed. His little jawline there has all the little, like, robotics and stuff. I love that little red square. I don't know why. It just looks really cool. You can see his little uh, spine neck right there, which is going out of focus because his shoulders are so big I can't get the camera that close. Down here, speaking of the shoulders, I love that little yellow line. That is very cool indeed. Back here on his back, you can see the little antennas poking up that we attached earlier, and that is very cool indeed. I say we, but you didn't help out at all. Here's the uh, imperial symbol that's all scratched up and stuff, and that is very neat indeed. Man, that looks so cool. I love that. Got the little scratches and stuff down his arms. Like I said, this figure is very plain looking. But yeah, when you look at it up close like this, you can see all the speckling and stuff like that. That is awesome. You can see he's got a hole all the way through his elbow. That is very awesome. Now, like I said, even in the movie, I thought this was clear. I don't know why, but yeah, I like this silver a lot better than being clear. You got these little skinny arms right here. Very cool indeed. And it goes down to another wrist joint that has the circle all the way through it. And then down here in the back of his hands, and his fingers look amazing. Now, it is worth noting that his wrists don't have the hole that goes all the way through it like his elbows do, and I think his knees do too, but yeah, that's okay. I don't mind that. Right here, you've got some scratching on the back of his uh, hand, and then you can see the articulation of his thumb right there. That's very cool indeed, and here's his fingers looking awesome. Looking back at his chest, over here to the side, we've got a little white and a blue button right there, I guess. I don't know what that does. That probably dispenses M&Ms or something. And then down here, you've got his torso looking very cool indeed. Yeah, I love all this little detail and stuff. It looks so good. Even inside of his uh, hip right there, which you can't see unless you really look inside there. That is awesome. Very cool indeed. you got his hips. Very neat. I love all the articulation there. That is cool. That's just the... Uh, the uh, uh, holder or whatever, the stand that he's on, as you can see, gripping around. That almost looks like a pipe or something. Very cool indeed. Working our way down his leg. And sorry if it's going out of focus. you got the knee again. Now, I believe the knee has the circle that goes all the way through, but we'll look at that in a second. And all the way down. Now, this is metal, as I said earlier, and that is very cool. Adds a lot of weight to it. And I, I could swear there's probably metal inside of his chest, but his chest doesn't feel like metal at all. And then there's his foot. He's the articulation at the toe. I love his little toe there. That's cool. Almost looks like a battle droid head or something. Now, looking at his feet from the side, he's got some Don Martin-sized feet. That's pretty cool indeed. Up here at his ankle, you can see he's got the hole that goes all the way through. Working our way up past his hand, which is in the way right there, you can see that his knee has that hole that goes all the way through as well. Very cool indeed. Yeah, this is awesome. You see he's got some uh, swiveling articulation there at the ankle. That is cool. So you can get him in a wide stance, and that is awesome. Now, looking at the figure from behind, he's got some Boba Fett-type scratches on the back of his head there. And then here's his neck, working our way over here to the little antennas. And like I said, those will break off if you're not careful, so be very, very careful when you attach those. Just be very careful, because like I said, it goes in there very flush. And yeah, good luck getting that out, because the only way to grip it is by these antennas, and they're not very thick at all. And like I said, they are kind of brittle. Here's the little thing. That looks like the thing that R2-D2 always plugs into on the Death Star and stuff. That's pretty cool. You got his uh, cassette tape collection right there, looking very neat indeed. 
down here at his back. He's got his car stereo. It's turned on, as you can see by the red lights. Very neat. He's got some little buttons there you can push, too. Very cool. And then back here on his back, his lower back, he's got a lot of stuff in there. That's very neat. I love the little scratches there. Like I said, he's got a flat robo butt. You can see the stand holding on to him right there. And the back of his legs right here, he's got some big old child birthing hips as, uh, as uh, L3 had in the new Solo movie. And then back here, you've got the uh, knee. Looking very cool. I, like I said, I cannot praise that silver more. I mean, that is awesome. I love that silver a lot. Looking back at his eyes, yeah, I love that they put those little lenses in there and those little, I don't know, those little grating things that go over his eyes. That is amazing. I don't know how they did that, but you know what? I just love that they did because that is so cool. And Hot Toys, my little foo hat is off to you because that is amazing. As for his accessories, you've got this bomb here thrown by the stormtroopers that he threw back. Now, as you can see, it's just glossy black. It has no other paint on it, but that's okay. It looks like the bomb in the movie. His only other accessory is this gun that Jin gave him later in the movie, and that is awesome. It looks so good. I love all the battle damage. It matches him perfectly. Look at it. I mean, it's sculpted so well. Got the grip right there. Oh, it looks so good. I love getting this, and man, he's going to look cool holding it. The only other thing he came with are these three little batteries, which I don't think I'll be putting into my figure right now. I may do it later, but it's not like you can leave them on. And, I mean, his eyes kind of light up in the right light as it is, so I'm not really worried about using these right now. But you know what? I it, They're just really hard to put in, in, in there, and I don't want to take his head apart trying to pop them in. So, yeah, just take my word for it. His eyes light up. Now, because I don't have any more Hot Toys Rogue One figures, here's K2SO standing alongside of Rey from The Force Awakens, and look how tiny she is! Now, his stand does raise him up a little bit of a fraction, but you know what? Honestly, it's not enough to make that big of a difference. She is just super, super small. Now, as you can see, K2SO and BB-8 shop at the same antenna store, and that's pretty cool indeed. But yeah, these figures look amazing together, and honestly, I think this is probably the best Hot Toys figure I've ever gotten. Because in all honesty, it doesn't even feel like it's a toy. And I'm an old school Star Wars fan. This feels like it, it's a maquette or something that they used to make the stop motion animation in the movie or something like that. It's that good, man. It doesn't feel like a toy at all. And I swear this thing is worth every penny. It is amazing. And look, you don't even need the batteries in his head to make his eyes light up. That is cool. So, there's my review of the Hot Toys Rogue One K2SO 1-6 scale figure, and man, this figure is huge and awesome. Like I said, this thing does not feel like a toy or a figure at all. It feels like a maquette from the days of old when they would do stop-motion animation for these Star Wars figures, and I absolutely love it. Seriously, it is worth every penny. It is big, it is heavy. It is awesome, and I absolutely love it. Plus, his eyes even light up, and I haven't even seen that happen. But you know what the best feature of all is? He'll do exactly as I tell him to do. K2SO, I want you to go over there and kill that guy. Seriously, go get him. Hey, hey, are you listening to me? Ah, crap, it's just a figure. <laughs> oh, well, until next time, tune in for more. Really thought it'd kill you. Oh, well. Hey, hey, you want to watch TV later or something? Hey, this is Nolan North. You don't want to miss Fool Reviews.